if I have x plus 6. So all these equations are going to be going to involve additional subtractions in them. That's it. No multiplication, no division. When you solve an equation, your goal is simple. You want to have all the x's on one side or the variables on one side, and you want to have all the numbers on the opposite side. That's really what your goal is. All the x's on one side, all the numbers on the opposite side. Well, to make sure the x is on one side, the numbers on the other side, you can see here, if that 6 was on that side, that would be in good shape. So Omar said we'll subtract because that's an addition. You subtract 6 from this side. And if you subtract 6 from this side, you're going to subtract 6 from that side. So you'll have what? x equals 17 minus 6. And what's 17 minus 6? 11. Let me try another one. n minus 4 equals 11. Again, here I want all the n's on one side, all the numbers on the opposite side. And it doesn't matter which side again. Since you have a subtraction, what do you want to do? You want to add. You do the opposite. Add 4 to this side. And if you add 4 to this side, you better add 4 to that side. n equals 11 plus 4. What's 11 plus 4? 15. Let's try a few more. Uh, let's take this example, uh, t minus 0 0.9 equals 1.8. All the t's on one side, all the numbers on the opposite side. So what, what are you going to do? Add. add, yep, add what? 0.8. Yep. So let's add them. Here's my decimal point, 9 and 8, which is what? 17, 7 carry 1. 1 and 1, 2, that's 2.7. M plus 2.5 equals 0 0.7. Uh, uh Well, let me change that because we didn't cover negative numbers yet. Instead of 0 0.7, I'll make it 3.7. All the M's on one side. You have an addition. What do we do with the addition? Subtract. M equals 5 from 7, 2, 2 from 3, 1. Your answer is x plus one third equals three and one half. Now taking you back to chapter two. We have an addition. What's the opposite to addition? Subtract. Subtraction. I'll subtract one third from both sides. So x equals three and one half 
minus one third. Let's go back to chapter two. You can change them to improper fractions. Two times three, six and one, seven over two, minus one over three. If you're gonna add or subtract, what do you need? Common denominator, which is what? Six. I will have to multiply the two by what to make it six? Three. Three. I'm gonna multiply the top by three, Sarah. Seven times three is what? 21. I need to multiply the three by what to make it six? Two. two. I'm going to multiply Omar the top by 2. 1 times 2, which is 2. 21 minus 2, which is what? 19 over 6. And since you have a mixed number, they probably want the answer as a mixed number. And just a quick reminder, on the test, some of you did the math like this and changed it to a mixed number. If the problem said write the answer as simplified fraction, that is a simplified fraction. You don't have to change it to a mixed number unless they say give me the answer as a mixed number. Or if they ask for a mixed number, you can't leave it like this. That's improper fraction. So you have to know the difference between them. Simplified fraction, that's this one. So to change it to a mixed number, we divide. That's three, three times six, which is what? 18, what's the remainder? One. So that's three and one. Six. Mm. Let me try another one. Jakim said he doesn't like fractions, so I'll add another one. So now let's see. This is subtraction we add. M equals five and one half plus one fourth. Two times five, ten and one. Eleven over two plus one over four. What's my LCD? Nope. Four. If you use eight, you'll be okay, but you gotta simplify it then. But four is the LCD. You multiply this by two to make it four. That's 22 plus one, which is what? 23 over four. Let's divide 23 by four. Five, five times four, which is what? 20. What's the remainder is three? Five and three over four. So that's M equal. M, yep, that's all of them M. Just like all of these are X, X, X. Now, on the test we just had last week, let's say I gave you this problem, add five and one half plus one fourth. You'll be surprised how many people gave me an answer of 13. This is not even six, right? And this is less than one. So even if you look at the high end, if you round at the high end, you go, oh, that's almost a six, and that's almost a zero if you round it, point, that's a quarter, less than a half. What's six plus Zero, should be around six. It shouldn't be 10, 12, 15, 16. Or I had questions on the test going, what is three and one half plus five and one six? Even if you rounded this, you know, that's almost a four, that's a five, what's four plus five? It should be around nine, the answer. 
it's not going to be 26. It's not going to be 34, 109. I get some bizarre numbers. But if you apply that logic, you will see like, oh, wait a minute. My answer should be in the neighborhood of 9. So any number that you get any answer, if you get something 102, it doesn't make any sense. So sometimes if you stop and think about them, think in terms of money. Go, okay, I'm buying something for five and a half or five bucks, a little bit more than five bucks. This is three and a half dollars. Three dollars and fifty cents. A little bit more than five. So when you add them, what are we talking about? A little around eight and a half, a little bit more than eight and a half. Not twenty, not seventeen, not forty-four. If you apply that, that could save you some time going, oh wait a minute, my answer I got here twelve doesn't make any sense. 16 doesn't make any sense. You know, I'm talking about around nine bucks here. Let's try this problem now. A number minus five and a half is the same as two and one half. So there's some applications or word problems that I know none of you like. A number, let me stop with that. Does anyone know what that number is? It's a variable, so we'll give it any letter you want to, like X, Y, T, M, N. Minus means what? Minus, there's the five and a half, is the same as, what does that mean is the same as? Equals two and one half. That's what that problem is. A number minus, minus means subtraction. Five and a half is two and a half. Now again, to solve this, what do you need to do? Add five and a half. Now, by the way, if you don't want to add them by changing to improper fraction, here we go. There's another way of adding them. If you remember, we did fractions, especially in a case like this. You add these numbers, what's one half plus one half? One. Half and a half. If you take half a cup of coffee, another half, that's a full cup. And what's two and five? Well, the answer is not 71. What are you going to do with that one? You can take that one, add it to this, so your answer is really eight, because that's one, which means zero carry one. That's one full one. So the answer should be eight. If you want to change it to improper fraction, then go ahead. I'll do it the other way. Two times two, four and one, five over two. Two times five, 10 and one, 11 over two. Since the bottom is the same, that's what? 16 over two, what's 16 over two? Eight. Let me try another one, like these problems. Go ahead, Jamie, okay. N increased by so I'm even telling you what variable to use. Increase by 3.6 is equal to 9. Here's this one. They tell us the variable n. Increase by. What does that mean? Add 3.6 is equal to, what is that? 
equals 9. So now I've got to subtract 3.6 from both sides. And let's, let's subtract them. That's 9.0 minus 3.6. You've got to line the decimal point, if you remember. 6 from 0, you can. This becomes 10. This becomes what? 8. 6 from 10. 2. Oh, yeah, 4. What am I saying, 2? 4. 3 from 8, which is what? 5 n equals 5.4. Let's try this problem. Another word problem. After six months of dieting, uh -oh. dieting and exercise, we'll add that to it. Sounds better than instead of just dieting. An athlete lost. Yeah. Lost eight and a half pounds. If she now weighs, now we're not talking about in the past. Now weigh 135 pounds. What was her original weight? What was her original weight? If you think about that, anyone who exercises or goes on a diet? 143.5. Probably. How'd you get that, Jamie? Because you go the original weight. Subtract from it. The eight and a half pounds that she lost should equal to what? The current weight, whatever it is, right? That's really how we calculate it. We said the original weight minus the eight and a half pounds she lost. She lost, that means minus. The original weight is unknown. So X minus eight and a half equals what? 135. That's a subtraction. How do you solve subtractions? You add. Again, that's 135 and has no fraction. This is 8 and 1 half. Line them up vertically. What's 1 half plus nothing here for the fraction? 1 half plus nothing is 1 half. What is 135 plus 8? 143. So that was the original weight, 143 pounds and a half.
that's some of the application. The only other thing I want to talk about, when, when you have minus, you add. When you have addition, you subtract. And it's, it's not bad, it's nothing wrong with it. But down the road, as the problem gets bigger and heavier, I'm gonna give you a quicker way to do like multiple steps in one. You'll see that, you won't see it in this section, but down the road you'll see how this becomes actually attractive. And I call it for addition and subtractions only. When you have addition and subtractions in the equation only. For addition and sub only, uh, let's go for only addition and subtractions. I use this saying, cross the line, change the sign. Oh, ch I'm sorry, not cross the line. Change side, change sign. Change side, change sign. What does that mean? X minus 6 equals 20. My goal is all the x's on one side, all the numbers on the opposite side. Well, I can accomplish that by taking the negative 6 from this side to that side. And when I change side, what happened to the sign? Change the sign. So x becomes what? 20 plus 6, which is what? 26. So you might see me use that a lot. As the problem gets bigger, I have x's on both sides, numbers on both sides. I'm going to move them around one step to clean it. I use change side, change sign. Another one. If I have 8 plus uh, 8, uh, n plus N plus, let's say 8, I'll make it 8.2 equals 13.6. Change side, change sign. Move the 8.2 to that side. N equals 13.6 minus 8.2. You change the sign. This is pretty, this one's on that. 2 from 6 is 4. I kind of remember those. Huh? This one? Yeah. Again, as the problem gets bigger down the road, this might be a quicker way to get to the answer instead of doing multiple changes. The reason I'm covering this, I'll give you just a little taste of it, you know. I'll give you a problem quickly. If I have, for example, uh, negative x plus 7.4 equals negative 2x minus a 5.3. Again, we're not covering that this section or the next section, but just down the road. My goal doesn't change. All the x's on one side, all the numbers on the opposite side. Uh, make that plus, because we didn't cover negative numbers yet. Let's make that plus 15.3. Wouldn't cover negative numbers yet. I keep forgetting. Now, I'll take this one and move it to this side. And I'll take this one and move it to that side. In one step. So I will have, when you bring that negative 2x to this side, becomes what? Positive 2x. Here's the minus x. That's not moving. That stays negative. The 15.3 is now moving, stays there. And what will happen to that plus 7.4? Negative 7.4. So you do two steps in one. What's two apple take away one apple? One apple. Yes. One apple. So that's x. And now we subtract 15.3 minus 7.4. 
4 from 3 we can't. This becomes a 4. That's a 13. 9. 7 from 14, which is 7. So that's why I'm covering that. Not for today, not for Wednesday, but down the road. You'll see me move things around like this as the problem gets really ugly. I use that one, change side, change sign. So just remember that. I'm sure once we get to it, we'll talk more about it. You know? Thank you for showing that. No problem.